Welcome back to The Ancient World, a podcast about Greek myth and philosophy, symbolic reading of the biblical stories, and the renewal and rebirth of the Florentine Renaissance. And in this episode, we're going to play two clips from a great uh, group video conversation we had this week. Uh, so this is with Sean from Mythos and Logos YouTube channel, and Greg, who has his Exiting the Cave podcast, and also Dr. Dan Scheffler from the University in Kentucky. Uh, so this first clip is about origin, about Alexandria, and how origin is synthesizing the Greek philosophy with the scripture, and in some ways moving towards concluding that he sees theology as the, f the fullest expression of philosophy. So uh, here's the clip. Just drawing on the stuff we talked about, and then discovering maybe more the intellectual side and the kind of the... Uh, the deeper tradition also with the philosophy that is within Christianity. So this is from, from the Tom Holland book, uh, The Dominion. Chapter four about, it's called Belief, it's a lot about origin. And Tom Holland is really, really kind of, <laughs> he's, um, he's almost gushing here with, with praise for origin. Uh, but he says here from, um, well, oh, there's a fun story with, so this is what the origin said about the scripture first. The sacred book of the Jews, their Biblia, still a pl plural at the time, the books, were rife with riddles, parables, dark sayings, and various other forms of obscurity he readily acknowledged. Yet all of them derived from God. Contradictions only hinted at hidden truths. The challenge for the reader was to access them. Or access them. Scripture was like a mansion with an in immense number of locked rooms and an equal number of keys, all of which lay scattered around the house. This haunting image, so Origen declared, had been suggested to him by his Hebrew teacher. And then Origen goes on to say that the key is to, uh, to understand this. Uh, the, the surest method for exploring this was the Greek and the Greek philosophy. So he makes this, this um, he keeps on saying also that Christianity, in Origen's opinion, was not merely compatible with philosophy, but the ultimate expression of it. So, I mean, this is <laughs> a bit astonishing, I think, to, to, to read this. But so, what do you think, Dan? <laughs> you know, Origin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big Origin fan, you know, yeah. except for the couple heretical parts. <laughs> 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 Although it is important to know, I don't think Origin himself as a person was ever condemned. It was only specific propositions. Yeah, uh, that were that were condemned. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a huge figure uh, in the early development of the patristic um, understanding of allegorical interpretation of the scripture. Uh, although Origen himself, of course, is uh, learning a lot from Philo of Alexandria uh, in the previous century. Yeah. Um, so he's not he's not completely uh, inventing this himself single-handedly but in a lot of ways he is you know in a lot of ways he is this single-handed figure that's right at the um beginning of the christian intellectual tradition and yeah. a huge amount of the christian theological tradition um a huge so just for the timeline like those things things. So, so origin is like the years where he's most active He's in the second century. I'd, I'd have to look up the yeah. specific specific numbers. And, and Philo is around. He's in the first century. First century. So Ph Philo is actually a contemporary of uh, sort of the New Testament. Yeah. But I mean, it's so interesting with Origen that he's he's really educated in in the Greek, and he takes in the whole <laughs> like he's he's formulating this spiritual philosophy, which is Christianity in right. the beginning. But it's like, it's so my, yeah, my view, it's a little bit controversial. But my view is that he is the origin that's mentioned by Porphyry in the life of uh, Plotinus. So he would be, if that's true, then he would have been a student of Ammonius Saccus in Alexandria and would have learned alongside of some of the greatest Neoplatonists of the time and would have known Plotinus um, mm -hmm. and in some ways is a major philosopher in his own right but he's, he's certainly synthesizing and bringing together and this part's not controversial that he's he's certainly bringing together a lot of the so-called middle platonic uh yeah. tradition with uh christian categories 
This, this is one last quote where he says, the genius of origin was to create out of the inheritance of Greek philosophy an entire new universe of the mind, one in which even the least educated could share. When he hailed God as pure intelligence, he was arguing nothing that Aristotle had not long previously said. So it's like, um, yeah, what do, what do you make of it? So if you talk about Alexandria for a second, so he worked in Alexandria. Do you have a little overview of Alexandria? Like when, like the, the golden age? And then yeah, Alexandria. yeah. So, so after Alexander the Great, obviously, uh, came through, he established a period known as Hellenism right where uh greek culture forms of thought um is gets spread all over the mediterranean world and alexandria right there in egypt was sort of a center of hellenistic culture uh you combine that with a uh, a bunch of jews and what's known as the diaspora uh came down and settled in alexandria so there's a major jewish community in alexandria at the time and so uh, this leads to a major synthesis of those two strands of, of culture, the sort of Jewish uh, spirituality, Old Testament, um, monotheism, and the Hellenistic uh, values, Hellenistic culture, uh, philosophy, uh, and whatnot. And so you have a major uh, philosophical schools established in Alexandria, I already mentioned among Sacchus and uh, Plotinus, you know, spent his early years in Alexandria. Uh, many other major thinkers spent at least some time in Alexandria. It, it really rivaled Athens as a, as a center yeah, for Yeah, I was thinking like the, the big, like you always have Jerusalem and Athens and what do they have mm -hmm. to do with each other and all, all those <laughs> the ways of looking at it. But, but then Alexandria, how does it fit into these two cities? Yeah, it, I mean, I, I would put it right on par with, you yeah. know, there's the famous quote about Jerusalem and Athens, of exactly. course, but in the ancient world, you know, Ephesus, Athens, Jerusalem, uh, mm. Alexandria would be major intellectual centers, Antioch as well. Yeah. Um, and the there's also a major catechetical school. So that's where the Christian part comes in. Uh, Clement of Alexandria started a catechetical school uh, there. And so it became a major center of Christian intellectual life. And Clement, of course, was Origen's teacher. Origen took over that catechetical school for, for a number of years before he was kind of not exactly kicked out, but like asked uh, to leave, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, but, uh, and the library, could you like a quick, for, I mean, that's maybe the most famous part of Alexander for many people. Like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, that was that was also a major center of learning and whatnot until it burned. Mm -hmm. So, would we gonna do more about origin uh, in a future episode as well, and more? Wonderful. About, what? Yeah. <laughs> what is huge fan? <laughs> <laughs> Good. I mean, I was I was looking at, um, but also with with Greg here, like we're gonna do some readings and uh, looking at on first principles. I just wanted to put another quote from him in here. Uh, I just started to look at it like from um, from the first chapter called The Father. And then just the language is immediately interesting, I think, when he talks about, uh, he wants to discuss whether like the divine has a body or not. Uh, God is light, as John says in his epistle. Uh, for, what other, uh, for what other light of God can we speak of in which, man, uh, in which a man sees light except God's spiritual power? which when it lightens a man causes him either to see clearly the truth of all things or to know God himself, who is called the truth. Uh, this is something he talks about the light here. Uh, and then for this one, for can we possibly think that because it is, it is termed light, it is like, sorry, it is like the light of our sun. Uh, there's something about the way he treats language here that he doesn't kind of, gives us phrases but he wants to discuss what we mean with the terms which is always a great indication of a great thinker i think uh, and then he goes on at length there with uh, the, discussing the, the nature of of god and of the light and everything so um, i think it's going to be very interesting to, to dive deeper into it <laughs> do you have any favorites like uh then on this uh, yeah, I, I, I really like uh, On First Principles. I also really like his commentary on the Song of Solomon. would highly mm. recommend that as well. Yeah. What do you like about that? 
the most. Um, I think I think there you get um, more of his mystical theology. You know, more of the sort of direct experience of what it's like to come to know God and to pursue God. Uh, he obviously interprets the Song of Solomon in a uh, very allegorical uh, way as a um, mystical presentation of the soul's pursuit of God. Mm. Good. Uh, and just one last thing. You said something earlier about uh, the connection between him and Gregory of Nyssa, who we mm. talked about before. Well, <laughs> the two of us have talked about life of Moses. Uh, is there anything about that as the last point? Like yeah, I mean, ob obviously, uh, Origen was a major influence on the Cappadocians, which is Basil, Gregory Naziensis, and uh, Gregory of Nyssa. Um, and especially, I think, on Gregory of, of Nyssa. Um, he, you, you can detect on practically every page some some influence of, of origin. I'm reading right now about yeah. uh, origin's development. Uh, there's a, a wonderful article by Ilaria uh, Ramelli, um, which I could I could link in the in the Discord. Um, but apparently, origin really is the uh, source of Gregory of Nyssa's use of the word hypostasis, which becomes very influential in Trinitarian uh, theology. Um, and so, uh, so and yeah, which, which, uh, which worth, worth, worth looking at that link between origin yeah. and Gregory of Nisa. I think in life, of it's Moses, just that Gregory of Nisa, of course, is, uh, never gets condemned and, <laughs> and remains orthodox. Right. You know, so, um, I think a lot of origins influence on Christian history going forward was through the, the Cappadocians, especially Gregory of Nisa, um, because, you know, people didn't want to have their hands dirty with, quote, originism. Um, but, of course, the Cappadocians are above reproach, so they, you know, get the ideas through them. Mm, great. It's just so nice when you can start linking. Like, it's mm -hmm. such a vast area, like landscape of thinkers and, and writings. <laughs> when you start looking at those first five, six centuries AD, but when you find a favorite, like, for me, it's then... Well, Dionysius and, and Gregor of Nyssa, the kind of really shining kind of, they stand out and then, and then you can start linking backwards. Mm -hmm. So you have some, something to hold on to. That's uh, is really helpful, I think. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to stop here probably. Do you have anything to say, Greg? So we can. Uh, just a quick question actually for Dan. Um, the, on the church fathers, um, if someone were to start out um, from ground zero. I mean, I've only read like maybe two or three smaller things, so I'm only sort of vaguely familiar with them. Um, but if you were to start out from ground zero um, with a familiarity in Greek philosophy, um, is Origin a good place to start or would you suggest someplace else? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Origin can be a little bit, a little bit difficult. Um, and he, he, you know, because of the originism controversy and whatnot, he ends up becoming somewhat, somewhat fringe later on. Um, I would recommend this for starters, maybe Athanasius's On the Incarnation, uh, maybe, mm. maybe uh, St. Basil's uh, On the Holy Spirit. Uh, those are two, you know, pretty approachable works. Also, Gregory of Nyssa's Life of Moses, which we've, we've also um, mm. discussed before. Okay. Um, yeah, if you could link those in the Discord as well. I mean, I'm just starting with the life of Moses, but a lot of it has been more medieval forward for me. So mm -hmm. going back to the very earliest would be very appreciated. It's hard to, it's hard to understand the medieval stuff uh, without the earlier background a yeah. lot of the time. And now for the second clip, this is just two minutes. It's about music and the beauty and the more spiritual dimension of understanding music. So here it goes. Um, Greg, well, you, you typed in the little uh, text chat. I really would like to hear you talk about it, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, you, I, just, uh, I just had that thought when you were mentioning music as an analogy earlier. And uh, I always find music fascinating because it's like this perfect conjunction of um, emotional experience, of um, just raw insight, but also of language and logic and physics, uh, just kind of all together in one place. 
Um, I've always found it fascinating. And I mean, this goes all the way back to the Pythagoreans, right? The, 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 the union between mathematics and music and the emotion of the spheres and all of this stuff, right? Um, music is like a kind of, um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't have a word for it, but uh, it's like, yeah, I guess a kind of microcosm of the transcendence in one place for us. Right? You can. And the, the unity between matter and meaning. Yeah. Uh, that's something I've been working through a lot lately that, I mean, good luck finding someone who can tell you that music is meaningless. <laughs> Um, and it's like, well, why, why, why does that song have a meaning? It's just a bunch of vibrations to your ear. Why should it be any better than any other song? Yeah. That's actually um, a really and, good succinct way to yeah, put it. The clear. union between matter and meaning. Yeah. Also good luck explaining that without playing. <laughs> yeah. <this one. laughs> yeah. Quite right. <laughs> I got to get my advertisement. Quite right. <laughs> so that's all for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed some of this and got some food for thought or inspiration for exploring some new thinkers. And as always, thank you so much for listening and see you again soon here on the Ancient World Podcast.